Have you ever done a science experiment and wondered what it'd be like if you did it big? I have. Phil, and I take your everyday science experiments and do them big. This is Science Max Experiments at Large. Science Max! This episode of Science Max is all about elastic energy. We use it to build a catapult and a paddle wheel boat, and then we max them out. We even learn some history. Elastic energy. Today on Science Max Experiments at Large. Welcome to Science Max Experiments at Large. I'm Phil McCordick, and today we're going to be building one of the most devastating, one of the most powerful machines known to medieval man using a plastic spoon, among other things. We're going to be building a catapult. Catapults were used throughout history for all kinds of reasons to throw all kinds of things, but mostly big stone blocks at castle walls in order to knock them down. Here's what you need in order to build your own catapult. You need elastics, uh, pencils, um, unsharpened is fine, plastic spoons, like I said, and popsicle sticks. Popsicle, popsicle sticks. Popsicle sticks. Um, I'm gonna go wash my hand. So, Here's the science behind what we're doing today. It's all about elastic force. Elasticity is a property of solid materials, like this elastic, and how much they tend to return to their original shape when deformed, like when I pull on it. Elastics are called elastics because they're great at doing just that. You can pull on it and pull on it and pull on it, and it'll, ow, 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 always return to its original shape. So we are using the power of elastic force today. Ow. Now it's time for a Science Max quiz. Elasticity is the ability for a material to return to its original shape when deformed, like this or this. Which of these materials have elasticity? A rubber band, a pencil, or a rock? Haha! -ha, this is a trick question. The answer is all three. Most solid materials have elasticity. Nearly everything will deform a little and still be able to return to its original shape. It all depends on how much. This is a steel bar. This is an elastic band. And this is an ice cream sundae. We're not talking about ice cream sundaes now, though. So get that out of here. Good. Now a steel bar and an elastic band both have elasticity. A steel bar can be stretched to 1% of its length and still spring back. A rubber band can be stretched 300% or more. The difference between the two is why we make balls out of rubber and buildings out of steel. Because the other way around wouldn't be good for balls or buildings. This has been a Science Max quiz. All right, let's build our catapult. The first step, take four pencils and stick your popsicle stick in between so you have two on the top and two on the bottom. And then use your elastic to go around and around and around. That's why I like building things with elastics because it makes it very fast to tie things together because once you go around and you have it nice and tight, you just pop it over the end and voila, it stays together. And that is how you start making your frame. Put more pencils on that side and another popsicle stick on the other end held on at the corners with more elastics. Then take even more elastics and put them right around the middle until you get this. I've added a few more elastics around the middle here and that is where we're gonna get all of our elastic force. I think I have six. The more you use, the better it's going to work. Take your popsicle stick Stick in between the elastics and then start spinning it around. Here's the reason I use pencils and popsicle sticks is because the pencils are a little bit longer, which allows you to twist the popsicle stick around in the middle and build up the elastic force. Now, because I'm twisting, the elastic force we're using here is called torsion or twisting force. When you feel you have enough torsion, pull your popsicle stick down a little bit so it won't unwind on you and you'll see 
that you have all kinds of elastic energy. Then take your spoon and stick it on the popsicle stick. And you can also break off the popsicle stick if you want to make sure it's the right length. And it works like that. To make the frame, you just need more pencils and elastics. The trick is to make a triangle with two pencils attached to your frame. They should stick up right where your catapult arm would be fully upright. Then take a final pencil and put it across the top. Don't forget to pull the arm back before you put the pencil across, otherwise it'll end up on the wrong side. Now this is very complicated and I went pretty fast, so if you want the step-by-step -step instructions on exactly how to build this, go to our website. And there you go, a catapult of your very own that you can use to knock down very small castle walls. I've also built a larger catapult using all of the same principles. Pretty good, huh? It's got a longer arm, which means I can throw marshmallows even further. Whoa. Or I can throw larger marshmallows. Or I can throw very large marshmallows. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Phil, is that the largest catapult you're gonna make? Well, of course not. This is Science Max, experiments at large. I'm headed to the center for skills development and training, and we're gonna max out the catapult so that it's big enough to throw one of these. Hey, Phil. How you doing? All right. This is Zach. He's a mechanical engineer. You build machines for a living, right? That's right. Great, because I need help building a catapult. OK, but what's with the pumpkin? Well, the pumpkin is what I want to throw out of the catapult. Um, see, I figure we just take the small design and we just make it so that we can throw one of these. Mm -hmm. What do you think? You're going to need a really big catapult. Yeah, and I'm also going to need some really big elastics. Where do you get those? Well. In medieval times, they used rope to make large catapults. Oh, OK. Well, rope is a lot easier to get, and that would be fine. Uh, and I want to make this arm uh, as long as this piece of wood here. This is going to be a huge catapult. It's a huge catapult. I guess we should build it outside, though, huh? Let's do it. OK, it's, it's over that way. OK. Right, I'll follow you. Sure. Do you want a hand with that? No, no, I'm fine. You go ahead, and okay. I'll, I'll just, maybe if you hold the door open for me, I could just hold. No, it's... You know what? You go, and I'll, I'll meet you. Our full-size catapult is going to look a lot like the popsicle stick version. We start with a four-sided frame and add some legs on the bottom. Our spoon is going to be replaced by a long throwing arm with a basket on the end. Then we need a really strong cross brace at the top to stop the arm. Just like in the small version, using a triangle shape is the best because triangles are very strong. Finally, we need something to wind around and around, which is going to give us our elastic force. Instead of elastics, we're going to be using rope for our catapult because rope has just the right amount of elasticity. But unlike medieval times, we're going to be catapulting pumpkins. Once Zach and I got it all put together, it looked like this. OK, we have built a catapult. Check it out. It's pretty solid, and I think it's pretty amazing. And just like in the small catapult, we have our elastic force. But this time, we're using rope. Right, Zach? Yes. OK, and rope will work as well as the elastic did in the small one? Yeah. All right, great. So what do we do? It's really well, loose we now. We need to wind this up oh so that we put God. some okay, tension into it. it. Go. The reason a catapult works is because the rope is twisted. The elasticity in the rope wants to unwind, which gives the catapult its power. Just like the small wind catapults, it. the more like you that. wind it, the better it works. Good. Usually in medieval days, they had whole teams of people doing this job. <laughs> but it's just me and Zach now. How you doing, Zach? All right. OK. And then we clamp it on here. So the thing doesn't unwind, right? Yeah. Good. All right. Now we have our pumpkin. And we're going to fire our pumpkin in our castle wall, which is made out of cardboard boxes over there. Pumpkin. All right, here we go. Pull on the arm back. Oh, oh. That elastic force is pretty strong. 
Okay. How do you think we you think that pumpkin's a good size? Oh, it's pretty big. You think? Oh, a little it's too big. Too, it's too big for our basket. Yeah. Smaller pumpkin! Smaller pumpkin! I'll hold this. No rush, Zach. No rush. Oh, okay, rush, Zach. Can't hold. Oh yeah. Can't hold arm. Okay. Ready? One, two, three. It didn't work that well. No, um, not that well. Yeah, so it went and it flew and it landed here, which is a little farther yeah, away from the wall than I'd short. like it to be. One third of the way to the wall. I don't know if that's enough. What do we do to make it better? Well, the way we're throwing it right now, we just have the pumpkin in a, you know, at the end of the arm. So yep. if we bake, make some kind of a sling so that we fling it as we're bringing it up. We make a sling? Yes. All right, I don't know how to make a sling, but you know how? Sure. All right, we'll make it and then you can explain how it works. Yeah. All right, good. Let's put the pumpkin over here. We'll put it, we'll recycle it later. 